Okay, so game one showcases some important things here. Uh, this hand's pretty keepable because I just merge a scroll for recall and have disruption. But moving along, I want to talk about how good this card is. Holy crap, this card is good. Um, our opponent's hand contained a Fire Ice, a Force of Will, a Recall, some other stuff. Um, but generally my plan here is going to be to... Well, you'll just see how crazy this card is. So Ritual, that resolves my opponent's want to force it. I'm going to Thought Seize here, take his Force. So yeah, we see his hand, there's an A Call, Fire Ice, Force of Will, some mana, who cares. Um, we're just going to take this. Presumably Necro into a way to fight this and then kill him next turn because Necropotence is dumb. Unfortunately, we don't get to draw quite as many cards as we want because we are at 16 life. So I decide that 8 is a good number. Um, exiling my tendrils here because my hand has a Doomsday Kill pretty easily set up. Uh, and that just, I don't really need to mess around with Light Maniac here. Um, especially when I have Force Will back up for his Fire Ice. Opponent plays Recall, we force, he plays a land, the way is clear, and now let's go through an easy Doomsday Pile. Ritual, Doomsday, all of the mana in the world up. Gush, A Call Lotus. I don't know why there's multiple Gushes in my pile. There was like a minute where I kind of wanted to have a cool pile that involved... Uh, fast spawn, but nah. So, yep, yeah, probe, whatever. Down to one life. Recall. Maniac. Gush. Floating mana for no reason again. Easy game, right? Turn two kill. Necropotence did its job. So this game, I kind of want to compare our win condition to theirs. So I will note that the mulligans are kind of important in that a lot of the other blue decks have consistency issues because they have a lot more pieces to assemble. Uh, and I feel like they're more prone to mulligans, which is definitely bad in a format where attrition is a real thing. So I kept this with the tutor because presumably I can tutor for something to go off here. Also have the duress. Uh, there's nothing quite, uh, nothing quite like draw seven powerful in this deck to do it with, but I think I let on the long, the wrong land in, eh, no, I wanted to duress here. I was thinking if I wanted to lead on fast bond and then go duress, but I think duressing first to force through fast bond is better. So misstep, we fight. Oh look, he had two missteps. And here's a tinker. We vamp, draw the recall because we're trying to draw into the most possible ways to kill him here. Uh, and we don't have life for Necro. We don't have mana for anything else. I opt to recall before fast bonding here. Um. Trying to think if there's a specific reason why I wouldn't play fastball on this turn. I guess my thought was that I'm going to get to use my land drop next turn anyways. I don't necessarily need fastball in hand. Um, and oh, also, the other reason is 4, 4, 4, 12 leaves me at 3 life, which leaves me uh, the ability to actually cast Dooms. Or, uh, yeah, that would leave me at 1 life to Delta fetch, so I couldn't cast Doomsday. There we go. That was the problem. So our opponent's last card in hand is another counterspell. He had the nuts, but it's worth talking about that um, not only did he need Lotus, he needed another artifact, all these things, whereas our deck needs significantly less to go off. And again, that's one of the draws to Doomsday as opposed to a normal blue deck. Um, also, they only have one Tinker, and their other win cons are more expensive and more fragile, like Jace or Key Vault. So this game is uh, very quickly over, because we don't really have a way to answer this from here. So this hand is a pretty clear ship to me. This hand is a pretty clear keep because we get to brainstorm and do all that good stuff. 
Oh, look, our blue opponent's mulliganing. Shocking. So, welders in play. That doesn't really affect our deck, which is kind of cool. And, uh, looking at this board state, I actually can just, uh, go for it here. So, here's an interesting game, actually. So, I'm going to Doomsday. Because the Maniac's in my hand, I don't... Let's see. If I remember how I set this up here. So gushing first, drawing some cards, recall no cards in deck. Okay, I just went for the live maniac kill. Uh, I think there may have been some cool storm kills to do with that stack, uh, but the assumption was that I could kill my opponent without uh, losing to a single counter spell if Doomsday result. And the single counter spell would be a uh, misstep that he for some reason didn't use in my dark grid uh, because I had a backup card draw spell. Um. For the record, I'm trying to remember the kill with... So I would gush first, draw two, uh, and then, yeah, I had a recall. And then if recall failed, I could brainstorm, draw more cards. Uh, I'd have two left in deck, so that's actually having to pass the turn there. Gush, recall... No, okay. That's incorrect. Uh, so one of the things with Brainstorm, actually, is that you are drawing three cards. So just to reconstruct, we'd have Recall being cast, uh, the ability to have a blue mana floating. So we'd Recall, he'd misstep. These last three over here are three drawn. Uh, we'd have drawn the Probe, sorry. Uh, we'd Probe into Sapphire. I'm trying to remember how this works. I swear I had it for a second. Yeah, so it looks like it would have been a pass the turn with Force of Will Pile if I had been mental missed up there. Oh, well. I think there may have been a better way to do that there where I don't get mental misstepped. But regardless, our opponent did not have it. Uh, unshocking considering his uh, five-card hand.